Good morning from the IRM in London and welcome to this webinar about the IRM certificate in ERM and financial services. Today we're going to look at how some organisations and individuals have been making use of our qualifications to boost their expertise in risk management and we're also going to go through the practicalities of how the enrolment and study process works. So my name is Vic Victoria Robinson and I'm Head of Marketing and Communications at the Institute of Risk Management. Having studied my professional exams in marketing, I know very well how it feels to be wondering what the course involves, how it's going to meet business needs and progress your career, and how you're going to be able to fit it into a busy work and family life. Before we start, let's deal with some technical points. If you have sound problems, then I'm afraid it's likely to be a problem at your ends with the speed of your internet connection, and there isn't anything we can tweak or do in real time. However, you will be able to access the recording of the webinar after it finishes, so you can always catch up later. If you have any questions as we go along, then type them into the question box and we'll see how many we can deal with in the time we have available. The IRM website is also a mine of further information. You'll find syllabus information for all the qualifications and details of enrolment and examination arrangements. We have about 215 people scheduled to join us for this webinar from various locations around the world. Because IRM's courses are designed for distance learning, we have students in many different countries. Every year, we have about 500 students studying with us on our various courses. Our courses and qualifications are sector independent um, because risk management tools and techniques can be applied in whatever sector you work in. So this is our agenda for today. So next we're going to hear from our distance learning uh, our module coach, Sally Starr. Then we've got two of our uh, recent students lined up for you so you can hear firsthand about their student experience. So firstly, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why people take professional qualifications, the sort of things that a risk professional needs to know and about the progression route through IRM qualifications. As I said, then we're going to hear from some people who have actually taken the qualifications and hear about their experience. So as I said, firstly, we're here from IRM module coach, Sally Starr, IRM Cert, who will go through the student experience, distance learning, and more information about what studying the certificate actually involves. Then we'll hear from Gabby Namanga, IRM Cert. He works in risk and compliance for Toyota in Kenya. And then finally, we'll hear from Lisa Beresford, who is interim head of risk at the Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital NHS Trust. We also have with us Lucas Murray from IRM student services team. He heads up the team which guides our students from their enrolment through to their studies and exams and hopefully into qualified IRM membership. He'll be talking about the practical details of how to enrol for the certificate and the logistical arrangements of study and taking the exams. He's also recently done it himself so he knows firsthand about the experience. Okay so why take a professional qualification <clears throat> and why do it with the IRM? Firstly, we're not a training company or consultancy. IRM is an independent, not-for-profit body owned and run by its members who are all practising risk professionals in some form. Secondly, we're not a university or college. That's not to say that we don't work closely with the academic world. Our qualifications are developed by a mixed team of academics and people actually working in risk, so they give you a great balance of academic rigour and practical application. As well as giving you the subject knowledge that you need, qualifying with the IRM gives you an internationally recognised professional qualification with letters after your name. In that way, we are similar to other professional bodies that you may encounter. For example, the project management institutes, engineering institutes, or similar for accountants or internal auditors. Belonging to an institute like the IRM also provides you with a network that will support your lifelong learning and career progression. As you might expect, IRM has some views on what makes a good risk professional and how qualifications and membership support professional excellence. The next slide goes through some of these details. OK, so finally, before I move on, um, just to show you the suite of qualifications that we offer. Today, we'll focus on the International Certificate in Enterprise Risk Management and Financial Services Risk Management but we also offer a digital risk management certificate and supply chain risk management certificate and our diploma in risk management as well. So finally, here's just a slide with some logos of some well-known companies um, that we've worked with. We work with organisations all across the world in all sectors. 
Okay, so that's all from me. So now I'm going to pass you over to Sally, who will go through more about the student support experience. Thank you very much. Thanks, Vicky. Can I just check that uh, you can hear me okay before I continue? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, so yeah, hi everyone. My name's Sally Starr and I'm the module coach for the International Certificate in Enterprise Risk Management. So just to quickly introduce myself, I am a risk manager working within the metals and minerals industry and have been working with the IRM as a module coach for over two years now. As module coach, I'm here to help students with any queries they have relating to the course content and I also facilitate discussion between students by posting news articles and conversation topics relevant to the module learning outcomes, um, basically to encourage students to share their real life experiences with one another. One of my favourite parts about being um, a module coach with the IRM is getting to interact with all sorts of risk professionals and students on a daily basis and hearing about their experiences within the risk management profession. Um, and students also benefit from this through our online discussion forums. And I'll talk more about my role as module coach, the discussion forums um, and how this interaction works a little bit later on. Um, but first, I wanted to just briefly tell you a little bit about the qualifications and how they all fit in with one another. So, as you might be aware, the IRM offers specialist training days on a variety of subjects, which, depending on the course and the level that you're currently at, can be used to either introduce you to a new subject area or further your existing knowledge and skills. We then have the specialist and international certificates, including the certificates in enterprise risk management and financial services risk management, which we will be looking at in some detail today, and these take up to a year to complete. Following on from the certificate, students can then go on to take the diploma and can then advance to the certified statuses of member and fellow as they gain more experience. Um, but today, because we're looking specifically at the international certificates, I'd like to spend a few minutes just talking you through the course structure and the content that you can expect to cover uh, within the certificates. So both certificates comprise two modules, each consisting of six units. So that's uh, 12 units in total, with module one focusing on the principles of risk management and module two concentrating more on the practice, i.e. The, the application of the principles that are introduced in module one. Uh, Lucas will talk to you more about the exams a little bit later on, but it is worth mentioning here that there are two exams, one for each module, and both exams are sat within the same exam period, so you'll study for both modules back to back. Now, both the ERM and financial services certificates cover all of the topics that are outlined on the slide which I'll briefly run through um, shortly, but it's worth noting that the financial services certificate has a greater focus on banking and insurance, making it more relevant to the financial services sector. So as I mentioned earlier, module one is centered around the principles of risk management, and it provides an introduction to the fundamental concepts relating to risk and risk management. Um, the content of this module prompts students to consider the following questions. So what is risk? How did risk management develop into the profession that it is today? What is enterprise risk management? And what standards and frameworks are there to help us through the risk management process? And it does this through six units, each focusing on a different principle of risk management. So the module starts with unit one, which provides a general introduction to some basic risk management concepts, including some definitions of risk and risk management, and also explores the history and origins of the risk management profession. In unit two, students are introduced to a number of different risk management standards, in, uh, including both general and alternative, so specialist approaches to managing risk. Unit three then goes on to look at the topic of enterprise risk management, so what it is, what it comprises, and how ERM compares with more traditional approaches to risk management. 
Unit four is then the first of two units focusing on risk assessment. So in this unit, students will be introduced to some of the various tools and techniques that are available to risk managers in undertaking risk assessments, and specifically the risk identification stage of the process. Then moving on to unit five, this then focuses on the later stages of risk assessment um, an analysis and evaluation. So here students will explore the concepts of risk likelihood and impact, risk appetite, and also the upside of risk. And then finally, unit six covers the topic of risk response and risk treatment, which again provides students with a number of tools, techniques, and approaches that are available for responding to and treating risks. Moving on to module two, as I said earlier, this module focuses more on the practice of risk management, meaning it's designed to get students thinking about the real life application of the concepts covered within the syllabus. So this module starts by looking at the global business environment, examining the impact of the wider business environment on organizations and the issues that this raises for risk management in specific sectors and geographical areas. Unit two then explores the topics of risk strategy and framework, building on the basic principles that were introduced in module one by looking in more detail at the key features of a risk management framework. In unit three, the relationships between culture, appetite and toler toler sorry, tolerance are considered and how this impacts the management of risk within organizations. Unit four goes on to look at corporate governance, introducing students to its key features and various models that are used across the globe. In unit five, you'll explore the nature and purpose of internal control, internal audit, and various risk assurance techniques. And then finally, the module ends with unit six, which focuses entirely on case studies, allowing students to really consolidate all their prior learning through the analysis of some real life examples. So as you can see, the certificates are extremely comprehensive. They cover a wide range of topics that are relevant at all levels of the risk management profession. Um, so whether you're just starting out as a risk professional or you've been doing it for some time, there's a lot to be gained from this course. And I can say from experience that completing the certificate gave me the foundation that I needed to be able to do what I do every day now as a risk manager. So now that you've got a good idea of what the course entails, I'd just like to talk you through the student experience a little bit more and the various resources and types of support that are available to students throughout the duration of the course. So firstly, enrolling onto an IRM certificate gives you student membership of the IRM. You might have already seen that the IRM provides a number of free resources on its website, which are available to everyone. However, student membership gives you access to additional IRM resources that aren't available to the public. Next, we have the online virtual learning environment, Moodle. Both of the certificates are distance learning courses, meaning that they are studied for online. Um, and as such, enrollment onto the course also provides you with access to this online learning resource, which guides you through the course one unit at a time and acts as a platform for storing all of the core learning materials, including the unit lessons and links to the essential reading materials and core textbooks. And now within Moodle, students also have access to discussion forums where I, as module coach, am available to answer questions on course content and students can and do also discuss the course with each other. And this is a really useful resource because it puts students in touch with other risk professionals, allowing them to learn from each other, ask each other questions and share their experiences in uh, applying the principles and concepts within the reading with each other. Um, Moodle also provides students with activities and exercises to undertake throughout their studies. Uh, so this really allows you to consolidate your knowledge and test your understanding of the course content along the way. And then this is further supplemented with two full specimen papers that students can attempt prior to taking the real exam at the end of the course. Within the virtual learning environment, students also have access to a number of pre-recorded videos, introducing them to the different modules and units, and also providing tips on revision and exam preparation uh, towards the end of the course. 
And then finally, in addition to these pre-recorded videos, there's also a live mid-program webinar halfway through the course, one for each module. Um, and this is where I will explore some of the course content in more detail and invite live questions from students. So as you can see, these courses are quite different from many other distance learning courses in that while they do of course involve a fair amount of reading, um, but your learning is supplemented by a wide range of resources in various formats to cater for different learning styles and preferences. So hopefully that's given you a good feel for the course and the types of support that will be available to you after enrolling. Um, and I'll now hand you over to one of our previous students to talk about their experience of the course and how they've benefited from it. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Gabin Omanga from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm an internal auditor and I recently sat and passed the IRM International Certificate in Enterprise Risk Management. Uh, today, I'm um, just quickly, in about five to 10 minutes, going to talk to you about my career, um, a typical day doing what I do, what I love about it, as well as the challenges that I face. Um, I'll also talk about why I did the IRM, International Certificate in ERM with IRM. And I'll also touch on a few tips on the on passing the IRM certificate and, and, and whether to do it or not. Um, when I started my IRM journey, I was working for Toyota Kenya, still work there in the audit risk and compliance department. In my department, I work with three other auditors and one compliance officer. Earlier on, I'd started in banking as a financial analyst. I moved to an engineering company in finance where I was rotated to the internal audit department and, and developed a liking for internal audit. And from there, I moved to Toyota Kenya as the internal auditor. Um, a typical day as an internal auditor in Toyota Kenya uh, depends on the department's plan, but, an, but the main role is to evaluate and improve the controls developed by the, again, the risk department, which we are part of, of course, working with the process owners. In Toyota Kenya, the risk and internal audit roles were combined in one department, but the tasks are very well defined for synergy and effectiveness of the function. Whenever a risk materializes or a threat, the audit risk and compliance teams ensure that it does not happen again. And if it does, we ensure that the impact is tolerable and within the company's risk uh, capacity. What I love about my job is the dynamism of the role. Each day is a new challenge to the team, and we are always excited to deal with it. I also get to interact with all operations in the business. This sort of creates an all-round understanding of the business and, and uh, an understanding of the entire role of everyone in the business. Some of the challenges we face, uh, I could mention the, the, the biggest challenge that I think all risk practitioners face, myself included, is a general lack of uh, risk decision making structure and lack of accountability for the risks in decisions in an organization. I'll explain it this way. Almost every business executive is comfortable with risk decision making. However, in, ma in many cases, the right people are not the ones making these decisions. In many cases, you find big risk decisions are being made too low in the organizations with people who are not uh, incentivized to make the right decisions for the organization. For, an exa for example, a project manager may accept a large information security risk that could lead to huge compliance and reputational issues, simply because the only thing they are incentivized or rewarded on is getting the new product out of the door. Another example in banking, a banker will be more than willing to lend to sanctioned entities or individuals of questionable character Again, simply because they are rewarded based on the number of accounts opened and the amount of money uh, loaned out and not the quality of the accounts. This falls on, on the risk officers or the risk department. That I think is the biggest challenge to risk practitioners uh, in the profession. Um, I decided to do the international certificate in ARM because a successful risk management program will always help an organization consider the full range of risks it faces. Um, 
Also a good risk management uh, practice examines the relationship between the risks and the cascading impact they could have on an organization's strategic goals. Having an in-depth knowledge on the identification, the assessment, as well as the reaction to these risks is actually what pushed me to study risk management through the international certificate in ERM. Um, in the real world, risks are very complex and unique for every organization, but the IRM training provides one with the ability to at first theorize, then apply these skills to customize the risks in their respective organizations. Um, it also adds a lot of practical skill in measuring, you know, communicating and testing the actual risks that occur in the business. Um, the, maybe I'll mention what the program has, has, has taught me that I put immediately into, into practice. Um, I learned, um, first of all, I learned exactly what I set out to learn from, from IRM, but also the program gave me a deep understanding of uh, risk identification. For example, using the bow tie model, it's a very interesting one. And also the quantitative assessment of impacts and likelihoods of risks, as well as tolerable tolerance levels. What I applied immediately after studying IRM is the classification of controls. I trained uh, some of the operations staff I work with on directive, classifying these uh, controls as either directive, detective, corrective, and preventive controls. And upon explaining exactly what we mean by these, I noticed that there was an increase in both the quality as well as the number of controls, especially around hazard risks. Um, what I will say to people who intend to study and other risk professionals, risk and internal audit professionals who intend to study um, to do this certificate is that uh, the qualification is not only relevant to the times we live in, but also the delivery by the IRM coaches, uh, Sally and her team is of top quality. The webinars are very elaborate and, and relevant. And also you get to interact with very, very knowledgeable students from all over the world. I'll give an example where in my class, we, we, we used to set up our own uh, Zoom meetings. This is uh, in the heat of COVID during the lockdowns in Kenya. We would set up uh, Zoom meetings uh, where we would meet and, and, and go through the topic with everyone who was willingly you know, contributing and giving different context to the specific risk, risk principles that, uh, that we were discussing at that point. I remember an instance where uh, while discussing BCP and business continuity, we had contributions from students from uh, UAE and Qatar on oil and gas, um, some students from Australia on tourism, and also a lady from Nigeria who spoke about uh, disaster recovery, I think, about the Niger Delta. So it was, it was very enriching, and, and these discussions are even ongoing. Even after we finished uh, our certificates, we still have a pool of... Uh, um, like-minded professionals where we can always discuss the issues that that arise in our different workplaces. Um, some of the tips I will give to um, students who are still studying this is, first of all, I would like to advise the risk ex experts and other internal auditors to consider taking this qualification as it expands your view of risk management. Um, I will also advise firms to consider this program as a necessary tool for the expansion of skills and knowledge in their departments. For students, I will, I will just like to advise that on the exams, the trick is to read the questions very, very carefully because there's only, there's only one correct answer. And, and, and like uh, Sally mentioned, once you've attempted the, the mock exams, you'll realize that there's only one correct answer and if the question is read very well, you, you will get the right answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gabi. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Sorry. Yeah. We're now going to introduce um, Lisa, who works as interim head of risk at the NHS. Thank you. Can I just double check that you can hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Thank you, Lee.
brilliant thank you so good morning good afternoon good evening to uh, from obviously from wherever you're dialing in from um i'm currently uh, the interim head of risk at shrewsbury and telford hospital which is part of the national health service the nhs here in the uk um so I came into this profession through working as a detective um, for the police for 19 years, working in the public protection unit. So I've always had that um, interest in risk assessment, obviously being able to safeguard victims. Um, and through working in the police, it then led me into the national health system, into the NHS. Um, so once I got into my position as risk manager, I wanted to develop my skills and my knowledge, not only for myself, but also for my organisation. And I was very lucky for the NHS to fund me um, and I registered onto the Enterprise Risk Management Certificate and uh, IRM. Um, I'm still working towards my certificate um, and due to take my exams in November. Um, but how it's helped me, uh, I'm going to cover two parts really. One is how it's helped me as an individual and the second part is really how it's helped my organisation. So in terms of me um, and job prospects, I started working for the NHS probably about three years ago as a risk manager for Chesterfield Royal Hospital. Um, very luckily they um, uh, agreed to fund this and I've gone on and I've now in the interim had a risk role at Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital um, which has obviously undergone quite a lot of media um, attention recently uh, so obviously risk has been at the forefront for this hospital so working towards this has really helped myself um, as a person, also the organisation, um, in being able to manage the risks that have been identified because of, uh, I don't know if you know, something called the Ockerden Report. So job prospects, quite clearly, it's enabled me to step into this role and uh, quite quickly and effectively been able to develop uh, myself and the organisation with this. Um, it's allowed me to expand my network. So through the workshops that the IRM offers, um, which I signed up to, and also through a number of social media platforms, LinkedIn, um, you can quite easily link in with other risk managers. If you put IRM, um, I think search into LinkedIn, it, you'll be able to see all of the people that have a LinkedIn account that have the IRM um, after their name. Um, and it enables you to be able to link in with other people from your uh, sector, for, for me, obviously it's healthcare, but from others, because um, I think it's really, really important to be able to work with other people from other partnerships and other sectors uh, to be able to try and um, manage risk consistently. And I think that's the word, consistent risk management. Uh, also through Twitter, uh, you've been able to expand your network. Um, and that's one thing I, I do recommend is to try and expand your network through the IRM. Um, and that's just to be able to share information with each other and to be, to be able to develop your processes. Um, also, uh, I was able to expand my network through the IRM platform, the learning platform that you get access to whilst working towards this uh, certificate. And I think lastly, it's the confidence levels for me. So studying towards this certificate has equipped me with the knowledge skills and tools that uh, I needed myself to be able to confidently um, articulate and share the uh, processes of risk management with my colleagues. Uh, one of the um, tools that I think Gavin uh, talked about was the risk management bow tie. Um, this is a, a tool that you'll uh, get to know if not already, um, through this certificate. And it is a, a tool that I've introduced into the trust. And it is a tool that is used by people on their own and also by their teams to be able to allow them to correctly articulate and describe the risk. And also through that tool is to be able to identify the gaps and weaknesses um, that will then allow yourselves to create and assign actions um, clear actions to people to be able to mitigate that risk. So that's a really, really good tool um, that I really um, do recommend for, for yourselves to use. And that's one of the tools that's introduced uh, during this certificate. 
also it's increased my confidence to be able to deliver workshops in a clear way sometimes the language of risk management can be complicated um, but for me for when you truly start to understand what it is you can then articulate it in your own words to make it very personalized to the sectors in which obviously you're sharing that with um, so that's really helped and also for me it has definitely improved the way in which we report risks the approval of risks and obviously the escalation processes to make sure that we're continually monitoring these risks and if obviously that there are not any clear controls or robust controls effective controls that are in place are able to assign actions to be able to help us reduce that risk so that's really for me um, and it does continue so uh, like Gavin has said, the, the, the networks, the, the contacts that you develop during uh, studying towards this certificate, um, they do continue on and I do recommend to continue those contacts and those relationships going forwards to be able to help each other out in your own industries. So how it's helped my organisation, um, which is obviously the National Health System. Um, we had to start from scratch at uh, Shrewsbury and Telford and it's allowed me to introduce realistic, clear and robust processes. Um, we brought in a new strategy uh, which feeds into the risk management development plan which is based on the Trust's uh, strategic objectives. Um, we brought in a new policy which is very, very clear, which has now brought in a very clear risk reporting um, approval escalation uh, process to the trust. It's also allowed me to introduce a process guide, which really is um, aligned to the ISO 31000 to give colleagues an idea of the tools and techniques that are available to them at every stage of the risk management process. And also from that, we've introduced a new and improved risk matrix, which is the tool that uh, we use with the National Health System to be able to rate our risks. Um, and that's to ensure that our risks are being rated consistently across the board. And like I said before, it's uh, allowed us to really put into place and embed a real robust risk reporting escalation process. And also introduced uh, the Risk Management Committee, um, and this is to encourage a holistic and integrated way of working. So it's coming away from working in silos and working uh, in uh, collaboration with each other to be able to problem solve and to be able to share the accountability of those risks as well, which is really quite important. Um, and it's to give uh, colleagues that confidence that we are supporting them with managing their risks and, and they're not on their own. So all of this, all of the hard work that we've been doing um, because of uh, the knowledge and skills I've got from the Enterprise Risk Management Certificate is we're now really working towards um, improving and embedding a real open and risk aware culture within the trust, uh, which, which will help. It takes time to get there. I'm not going to lie, it does take time and you need to have obviously colleagues on board as well. But to be able to have colleagues on board is to be able to explain these things to a level that they're able to understand. And I really do feel that the um, risk management certificate is articulated in such a way that you can understand that and then obviously share that with your colleagues. Training, uh, the training that I've been able to provide to staff um, because of being on the uh, certificate has really helped. Let's say the bow tie that's being used and also I've introduced a number of bite-sized how-to sessions and one of those really is me sharing the bow tie template and explaining how to make use of the template and that's something that we've been able to um, embed within the uh, intranet for the trust. So it's making sure that you as a head of risk, risk manager um, and also those processes are visual and uh, easily accessed so really that that's how the enterprise risk management certificate is still continuing to help me like i say i take my exams in november cross fingers uh, i'll be able to pass them but yes do what i do recommend as a student is like gavin has said read the question um i know when i was uh 
I'm 42 now. So learning isn't easy. It doesn't come easy to me, especially if you're working in a full time job. Um, but because I'm obviously working in the area of risk management and I'm also being able to uh, introduce these new strategies and policies, I'm continually um, refreshing my mind with this. So it's not easy, but um, it definitely brings with it a lot of advantages and it is definitely worth the investment. So if any of you uh, are interested uh, in this, I, I do recommend registering onto this course. By all means as well, I'm more than happy to answer any questions anybody might have in the future, especially my colleagues from the NHS that might be dialing into this call and how it might be able to help their trusts. And also to be able to provide a consistent risk management process along the national health system, um, which is, is something I'd, I'd strive to achieve. So, so thanks Vicky for giving me this opportunity to share um, my uh, experiences and uh, back over to the RM. Brilliant. OK, can I just say thank you um, very much to Gavin and Lisa for your very valuable time. We know that you're very, very busy. Um, you know, people are dialing in in their own time. So thank you. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. OK, so we're going to um, pass over to Lucas and he's our um, head of student services. Um, as I said, he's recently done the certificate himself, so he knows it inside out. And he's the uh, gentleman that you'll be uh, talking to should you enroll and he's very capable of guiding you through um, making you sure that you get a great student experience for the Institute of Risk Management. So Lucas, over to you. Thank you very much Vicky for this great introduction. Um, good morning everyone from the IRM office in London. Um, as Vicky just said, my name is Lucas Moraes. Um, I have been working for the IRM for just over three years now. Um, I started as a student support executive here. And my main reason for taking the International Certificate in Enterprise Risk Management was um, the main objective of the student support team is to help students throughout their journey um, to becoming certified risk professionals. So I thought, what a better way to help people um, than understanding what they go through themselves. Um, so, yeah, uh, taking the international certificate during COVID, just as Gavin and just as Lisa, this qualification has immensely helped me, um, not only in my personal level, um, to be more confident, but also to help my organization to, to meet its objectives. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about how um, the enrollment process works. Uh, all the way until you become a, a certified risk professional. So first of all, there are no entry requirements uh, for the international certificates. Uh, anyone can enroll. Um, if English is just like me, not your first language, then we do recommend you having uh, an IELTS uh, overall score of six. IELTS is the international English um, testing system. Uh, but it's again, it's a recommendation. And if you do have a good understanding of the English language, then you should be OK. Uh, the first step of the enrollment journey is submitting an application. Um, I will give you details of how, where to find the, the application or where to enroll at the end of the presentation. Um, but yeah, if you're enrolling between today and the 31st of May, you will be sitting the exams in November, December 2022 um, alongside Lisa. And the after enrolling, you get access to the virtual learning environment, which Sally has mentioned with all the resources that are available for you there. Um, the access is provided upon, upon payment of the course fee. And there you have access to modules one and two of the international certificate. Each module requires uh, roughly 180 to 200 hours per module. And you might be thinking, oh, how much is that over six, uh, six months, um, which is the time you would have if you enroll between now and the exams in December. Um, if you think that six months have 4,400 hours, then you would be committing 10% of your time um, between now and the December exams. And once you've gone through all the learning materials, uh, watched the webinars and taking the mock exam, you would be more than ready to take the examinations. 
uh, like I said, the, there are some examinations in December 2022, if you enroll by the 31st of May, or we are also opening uh, another enrollment window later this year in September 2022, and that would be to take exams in June next year. After you've taken the examinations, we'll, which I will be talking a bit more in detail um, in the next slide, uh, you will receive the results six weeks after the last exam of the exam window. For December 2022, your exam window goes from the 21st of November until the 2nd of December, so you can book your exams uh, within this window and providing that you pass both exams and you receive your exam results in the January 2023, you are admitted to the IRM membership and you can use IRM cert as a post nominal. So being an IRM cert means you are a certificate member of the IRM and that's the first professional membership grade that we have. Um, the upgrade from student membership, which you get for free to IRM cert happens automatically after you pass your exams. But then to keep your membership, you are required to fulfill some CPD hours and of course uh, pay an annual subscription. Uh, finally, this uh, qualification is set as a degree level of study. Um, so to take that, the examinations uh, like Sally mentioned there are two exams one for each module and they are taking at the same uh, in, the, in the same window each exam it's run for over 90 minutes and uh, has 60 multiple choice questions uh, the exams are computer-based but they must be taking at a person view examination center the, we have uh, exam centers that are available worldwide and you can check uh, the nearest one using the link available there or you can also find more information about the exam centers in the IRM website. There are the, the exams, like I said, there are multiple choice. There are three style questions um, on the exam itself, but you, you would get access to that if you enroll for the course and do a mock exam. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the blended learning workshops. So the blended learning workshops are more interactive learning experience for the students who require some additional support. So on top of all the resources that Sally mentioned, which are included in the course fee, the blended learning workshops are not included in the course fee. So if you are interested in taking them, you would have to enroll separately. Uh, the workshops consist of full four, um, four full days of uh, learning sessions, which are at the moment they are delivered through Zoom, which means you can uh, enroll for them also anywhere in the world. Uh, the first workshop is an induction section. The workshops two and three are a bit more about the content and then workshop four, uh, it's about the revision. In, in the sessions, the tutors go over most of the important things that are mentioned in the core text workbook, uh, as well as the essential readings and all the definitions that you must know for the exam. The blended learning students also have learning materials and a set of additional questions that are developed exclusively for them. And the resource that I found more most useful from the blended learning workshops was before the fourth session, which is the revision session, your coaches, they send you a, a mock exam, which you do under exam conditions. Um, the tutors then receive the answers that you gave and they help you identify your learning gaps to better prepare for the examination itself. So for me, that was the, the, the best that I took from the blended learning workshops, as well as the confidence to sit the exam, knowing that I had this additional support. Um, and lastly, the pass rate for the blended learning students is usually 15% higher 
than the students that take the self-directed learning option. So, like I said, if you are ready for uh, to enroll, you can visit www.dirm.org slash forward qualifications and enroll online. Or you can request an application form by emailing the student queries team. Uh, our email is studentqueries at dirm.org. Um, if you do have additional questions, please just email us and we will be more than happy to help you as well. So, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Luke. Um, so if um, anybody has any questions, um, you can email us, um, contact the student queries team, we'll be more than happy to help you. Um, so that concludes today's webinar. Thank you for everybody that's signed in today to, to hear about uh, what IRM offers and thank you to my colleagues um, that have participated in the call. Thank you very much everybody, have a good rest of your day. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you everyone.